All right, folks, today, President Joe Biden signed an executive order to protect abortion rights for Americans. Two weeks ago, the Supreme Court ended a woman's constitutional right to make her decisions about her body. Biden's order calls for the Department of Health and Human Services uh, to submit a status report and create an interagency committee on abortion. It also expands access to contraception, provides free legal representation for abortion providers and those seeking abortions, and has additional protections for reproductive health care data. Now, the president urged Americans to get out and vote to prevent their rights from being taken away. About a deep, long-seating antipathy toward Roe and the broader right to privacy. As the justice wrote in their dissent, and I quote, the majority has overruled Roe and Casey for one and only one reason, because it has always despised them, and now it has the votes to discard them, end of quote. So what we're witnessing wasn't a constitutional judgment. It was an exercise in raw political power. On the day the Dobbs decision came down, I immediately announced what I would do. But I also made it clear, based on the reasoning of the court, there is no constitutional right to choose. Only the way to, the only way to fulfill and restore that right for women in this country is by voting, by exercising the power at the ballot box. Let me explain. We need two additional pro-choice senators and a pro-choice House to codify Roe as federal law. Your vote can make that a reality. I know it's frustrating, and it made a lot of people very angry. But the truth is this, and it's not just me saying it. It's what the Court said. When you read the decision the Court has made clear, it will not protect the rights of women, period. All right, folks, let's talk about this with our panel. Kelly Bethea, communications strategist, Michael M. Hotep, host the African History Network show, Matt Manning, civil rights attorney. Kelly, there are people who wanted uh, President Biden to do more. Folks like Ellie Mistel uh, has been saying that, look, he should provide, uh, again, allow abortions on federal uh, property. A number of different things that he could have done. Do you believe that this executive order is a, an effective one? <clears throat> I won't know if it's effective until we actually see it in effect, but you're, I agree with those who think that he could have done more. Um, executive orders wield a lot of power, and we saw that power in action through many presidencies uh, between Obamacare and Trump executive orders and even some of Biden's executive orders after um, he uh, got into office uh immediately, right? So to say that this was enough, I, I'm grateful that the administration is doing something, but it always feels like they are considering the other side of, of the political spectrum when they make decisions like this, when it has been made clear time and again that the other side of the political spectrum does not care. So I don't think it went far enough, but I'm glad that something got done. Maybe this is the start. I hope it is the start. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, Matt, to, for folks to understand how Republicans, uh, how frankly nutty they are, check this out. Uh, Texas legislators threaten sitly over abortion care travel costs. Here's a major law firm, a major internet, a national law firm, uh, significant presence in Texas. And these folks are saying, if you dare pay the travel cost for employees, we're going after you. I'm sorry, what the hell right do they have to tell a law firm what to do? Right. They don't have any right. And what they're trying to do is kind of add to that fear mongering we've already seen with the Texas law that essentially puts a bounty on anyone who, well, before, you know, Roe v. Wade was... Uh, was repealed, uh, they put a bounty on basically anybody who was seeking abortion access here by empowering people to, you know, basically tell on their neighbors or anyone they had credible evidence was seeking an abortion to the tune of a $10,000 fine. So it doesn't surprise me. It's part and parcel with what we've seen the Republicans do. And we see that they are, it's an all out assault at this point. Um, and really an all out assault that is incongruent with what their messaging has been for the last many decades that, you know, freedom, don't tread on me, don't tread on my rights. Nonetheless, in this instance, if those rights are incongruent with what I tend to believe, 
then I think you shouldn't have the right to make decisions about your body, which is really kind of anathema to the idea of uh, American rights in general. But beyond that, the general autonomy that we all have over our own bodies and should have by virtue of being human. So it doesn't surprise me that they're doing that. Um, and I just wanted to say, as it relates to the executive order, I don't think it went far enough, but I'm sure that the Biden administration knew they were going to be embroiled in litigation um, if they went too far. So perhaps that's why they took the tack that they did. But I think that Eli Mistel's uh, suggestions and others, surely, that have been uh, proffered would be the right suggestion. I think he could have allowed it on federal land and or maybe taking some other routes to make sure that people have this necessary uh, health care as an option. Um, here's what I find to be laughable, Michael. Again, this is the letter from Texas, uh, from the Texas Freedom yes. Caucus. Uh, they actually said, to the extent that Sitley is facilitating abortions performed in violation of Article 4512.1, it is exposing itself and each of its partners to felony criminal prosecution and disbarment. The letter also details proposed legislation to be introduced in Texas that will impose additional civil and criminal sanctions on law firms that pay for abortions or abortion travel. The Freedom Caucus would like to impose felony criminal sanctions on anyone paying for an abortion, allow private citizens to sue over it a la SB8, and any lawyer who furnishes the means for procuring an abortion knowing the purpose intended will face disbarment. Uh, now, here's what's uh, pretty stupid about this, Michael. <clears throat> First of all, Texas law does not travel across state lines. Right. That's first. Right. You can't, you can't say, oh, if you did pay for it in Texas, uh, but it happened elsewhere, then the law applies to you. No, it doesn't. You're only able to govern what happens in your state. But I need people watching and listening to understand that this is the extent that these Republicans are going to try to go to uh, to threaten Americans for making their choices. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah, Roland, you know, this, this is so crazy because when it came to being able to uh, not wear masks, they wanted freedom, okay? When it comes to Second Amendment rights, they want freedom. But when it comes to women having autonomy over their body, all of a sudden, now they don't want freedom, okay? So uh, th this this is what Biden is dealing with. The, the executive order was good. It came within two weeks of the ruling from uh, the U.S. Supreme Court. I know uh, that people say that there's more that can be done, things like this, but when it, when it comes to um, doing abortions on federal property, okay, well, if that takes place within Texas, then you're still dealing with all these lawsuits and you're still dealing with this legal backlash because it took place in Texas. I know it's on federal property. So, you know, th there may be another portion, possibly, of an executive order coming. This is a good first step, but you, it has to be codified by Congress. It has to be codified by Congress, which is why it's important. For, it, it was important for him today to drive home the point again that you need at least two more Democratic senators, and not Democrats like Joe, uh, Joe Manchin, but the right type of Democrats who will vote to codify Roe versus Wade. And I would say you need more than two, because as, you, as you've as you talked about here on this show before, Roland, uh, you have some Democrat Democratic senators in states that have Republican governors. If something happens to one of them, that Republican governor can replace them with a Republican senator and tilt the balance of the Senate. So. This is high stakes, grandmaster level chess that we're dealing with. So this is extremely important, but this is a good first step. Uh, Melanie Campbell, uh, Black Women's Roundtable, uh, your assessment of this executive order uh, signed by President Biden today, does it go far enough? Oh, I think it's, it's, it's what he can do uh, from, from the, uh, the pulpit of the White House, at, from the executive branch. Truly, what we have to have is a legislative remedy that's going to be systemic. Uh, uh, can he do more? Yes, I think that they'll, they'll continue to push it. I think it's very important uh, that he that he stated that it was important that folks also vote and try to do with the do, uh, uh, use the the, book, the uh, power of the vote, even in the midst of, of, of the challenges we face, of course, with uh, this election cycle, because we won't be able to codify Roe v. Wade without. Uh, Congress acting, and the Senate is up, the House is up, 
and well as well as many states and even as you try to figure out how to uh, roll this back uh, there are so many governor's races and, and state legislative races that are also up this year. So I think it's really important. Uh, I think also uh, what was important is that they were going to use the Department of Justice uh, that would try to protect people who may end up being charged for driving across state lines. Some of those very uh, nuanced things. The sisters that I work with and support, uh, like Sister Song and others, really talk about the, the concern about the criminalization of women as they seek um, uh, reproductive health care services uh, when they're in states. So I think that's going to be really important as we work to fight the, the political battle. We also worry to make sure we protect folks from being over-criminalized. Um, what, what we're now, one of the things, Melanie, that, uh, that, that Biden said is that uh, Republicans greatly underestimate the power of women. He believes uh, that this Supreme Court decision is going to be a boon uh, for Democrats, and it is going to really hurt Republicans in November. Agree, disagree? I think uh, I partially agree. Um, I think that, that there's nuances to that for black women. There are other really critical issues that impact us, but generally, I think younger women are long lines of, uh, of age, when you're looking at women who are in their reproductive years, uh, having that concern and waking up to it. Well, one of the things that happened a lot when we were uh, in New Orleans for Essence Festival weekend, uh, the kinds of conversations we were having, there was a sense of, 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 of urgency by younger women who were trying to figure out now this is really happening, my rights are being taken away, just trying to figure out what to do and how can... Uh, what, what is it that we can do to fight back? And so I think that, so, the, so I heard a lot of that over the course of the weekend, the issue around our rights and freedoms, whether we're talking about voting rights or reproductive rights, I think the connection to understand that our all of our rights and freedoms are under attack or uh, in a situation where they're going to continue to erode rights and freedoms for, for uh, uh, all of us. And so I think that it will, it will have a role. I think it was seismic. It was such a major shift in rolling back, just like we were out there in the streets a year ago and continue to fight, of course, around voting rights. This, I think the timing of it is on people's minds when people would normally be thinking about just going to the beach, quite frankly. They're worrying about whether or not if something happens, I need to get an abortion or I, or I may be in a hospital or I may have to have those kind of reproductive uh, services to save my life or a family member's life. So it's it's out there in the ecosystem and the folks that are showing up the very first day, you know, Deborah, Deborah Scott uh, with Georgia Stand Up, who, who we partnered with around Black Women's John Table. Within that hour of that decision, her young people who, who are, are, are interns for her for the summer said, we want to go out here and do something. So they were out there in front of the Georgia State um, uh, House protesting. So, so when you think about the, the response, I think it will have an effect. The, the, that, that really is the, the, the fundamental question, um, uh, Kelly. You hear uh, Biden talking about vote, vote, vote. <laughs> Uh, we know 53% of white women voted for Donald Trump in 2016. They came out to support him again in 2020. Uh, and so uh, if that's the case, was, was Biden saying correct? Because the reality is the largest, the largest, group, of white, vo largest group of voters in America are white voters. I, I still feel like Biden, in a way, is in this, you know... USA Wonderland, where everything is kind of sort of off balance right now, but it'll get better. Meanwhile, the rest of America is like, no, this is what it is right now. Um, I won't have any faith until I see the votes come in. Like, I feel like I learned my lesson after Trump got elected not to trust in polls, not to trust in much of any type of analysis thus far that says anything outside of, you know, the, the, the nitty gritty being, you know, white supremacy is, is ruling the, 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 the white people right now. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I wish that he would get on board with, you know, just kind of 
not being as bipartisan as he is and just getting done what needs to be done. But like I said, we'll see. Look, uh, Matt, uh, bottom line is this here. Uh, white women uh, are going to vote like the way they did uh, in 2016, 2020. I, I, me personally, I, I don't all of a sudden see uh, these white Republican women going, oh my goodness, this is going to be our most fundamental issue. I don't think so. Now, independent women, that could be the case. Uh, so the reality, what I, what I keep saying is you're going to have to see uh, black and Latino and Asian turnout at a much higher rate. But when it comes to, to Latinas, you got to factor in the stronghold of the Catholic Church when it comes to their perspective on abortion. I think that's correct, Roland, but I think what remains to be seen is the effect of all of the single issue voters who voted Republican for so long because they were so incensed or otherwise energized around abortion. I, I do wonder what the aggregate effect of that will be. Uh, but to your point, obviously, we need more uh, people voting, uh, non-white people voting in mass to make sure that the correct things happen going forward. And one thing I wanted to add that I didn't mention before is I do think that Mr. Biden has a good opportunity to test the bounds of federalism here because the real fallout of Roe v. Wade is it goes back to the states, right? And you have a patchwork of state policy. So I think one of the things that the federal government can do here is really push those bounds of federalism because I think Michael alluded to the point earlier, you know, if something were happening on federal land in the state of Texas, the state of Texas might try to fight it, but I don't think that the state of Texas would have supremacy over that federal action. So I think that is one one place that they can continue to build on not only these protections, but maybe affording the actual right to people, despite it being taken away by uh, this new ruling. Michael. Yeah, Roland, you know, um, Biden got 81 million votes 2020. 61% of his votes came from white people. That was 49 million votes. 20% came from African Americans. That was 16.9 votes. Um, the intensity right now, and it's going to continue, I think, as we hear, just like there was a, a story the day that MSNBC ran dealing with how one of the drugs that's used to treat cancer is also used uh, to treat for when, that women use it when they've had miscarriages and how this can be also a drug that gets banned. This is the next step of this. It's not going to stop here, okay? So if you look out in the streets, people are not marching in the streets because of inflation. They're not marching in the streets because of high gas prices. But women are marching in the streets of different races are marching in the streets because their constitutional right to safe abortions has been taken away. So I think that I think this is different in some respects to 2020, because now you're actually dealing with the Supreme Court ruling and taking away a constitutional right they've had for 50 years, as opposed to in 2020 or 2016, they were saying they, it could happen, okay? So I think you're going, I'm not saying all white women are gonna vote for Biden, that's not what I'm saying, but I think, I think the game has changed here. And this is an opportunity for uh, Democrats and, and others who see this as wrong to galvanize the support and actually turn this into votes for uh, the right type of Democratic candidate. All right, folks, back to that Roland Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?